Hey, Zara, when's the next time you think you can come by? I'd like you to bring over a couple of pairs of clothes for me. Oh, it looks like a bath towel, too. Could you do that for me? But I just came by last week. I don't have so much free time to just keep going all the time. I've got a lot on at the moment. I have my personal life too, you know. Besides, it takes me over 30 minutes to get to the hospital you're at. I'm pretty exhausted from having to sort out the insurance and paperwork for the hospital too. Can you wait a little longer? Look, I get that and thanks for doing it. But <laughs> I've just broken both my legs in a traffic accident. Can you make me a bit more of a priority at least while I'm in hospital? I have been doing that. Everything you have in your room right now is stuff that I brought over. And why do I have to bring you more clothes? You can borrow patient robes from the hospital. Well, I know I can, but it looks like I'll be here for a while, so at the very least, I thought it'd be better to at least wear some stuff that I'm used to and comfortable in. I'm not going to pamper you like that. Don't ask me for things you can do yourself or get the hospital to sort it out for you. You're not usually one to do this, Steve. I thought you were the kind of person who does whatever they can on their own. That might be true when I can move on my own, but at the moment, that's not really the case. Now it's different. Okay, okay. I'll post it over then. What? Do you have a problem with that? You should be grateful that I'm sending you the things that you want. Look, Zara, when I first got hospitalized after the accident, you didn't come visit me for quite a while. And even now, I have to ask you to come see me. <laughs> It'd be nice if you showed that you cared at least a little. I do care, but it's not like you're going to get better any faster by me coming by. Well, yeah. That might not help my physical injuries, sure. I felt that you've been becoming colder and colder towards me. And since the accident, it seems like it's getting worse and worse. Before, I'm sure you would have done whatever you could to help me out. I want to know, why have you been acting like this? Did I do something to upset you? I've tried my best to let you be as free as possible and do what you want. What's this? Now you're going to scold me? You're going to put me in a bad mood with that, so stop it. But I'm being serious. You really have changed a lot recently. It's been three years since we got married. Of course people will change in that amount of time. It's not always going to be like it was when we were dating. I know that. Also, I'm going on a trip next week. So try not to message me with annoying requests. I don't want you to ruin my holiday. You go on a trip? You didn't tell me anything about that. I just told you, didn't I? I mean, it's fine and all for you to go on a trip, but do you really have to go right now? Oh, you're starting to really annoy me with this. Not like you're sick and dying, so what's the problem? And you can barely move, so it's not like you can come home with me either. Can you at least tell me where I know you're going with? I'm your husband, so I have the right to at least know that much. Are you kidding? Talking to you really is exhausting. Well, it's getting too annoying to hide it, so I'll tell you. I'm going with another man. What? You get it now, don't you? There's someone else I like apart from you. That's why I don't have any interest or attachment to you anymore. You've got to be kidding me. <clears throat> this has got to be some kind of cruel joke. Are you telling me you've been having an affair? Yep. So, will you leave me alone? You want to get a divorce? That's right. I'll send the divorce papers along with the other things you asked for. Make sure you sign them. I wasn't planning to tell you why you were in the hospital because I felt bad for you. Then you just kept on complaining, so I thought I may as well do it now. It's my fault. I'm expecting you to split everything equally in the divorce too. Don't let me down. Steve, how are you? Hey, Mark, you know, same old, can't move from the bed. How is everything? Not too bad on my end. How's your condition looking? Any changes? Not really. But I'm just lucky to be alive, so I'm not complaining. I'm still unclear though whether I'll be able to walk again or not. Sorry about leaving all my work with you. And you're supposed to be moving back to your hometown next week. That's fine. It's the least I can do to say thanks. You've done a lot to help me out in the last two years that we've been working together. Whenever I made a mistake, you always had my back. I'm glad I can do something to repay you before I go. Although I would have liked to keep working together. I mean, it can't be helped. Your dad is sick, so you should go back and see him. I totally understand. Thanks, Steve. I'm still going to be around for a few more days, so let me know if there's anything I can do for you in that time. I can bring things over for you if you need them. Thanks. 
You're more helpful than my wife. <laughs> oh? Did, did something happen between you and your wife? I just found out she's been having an affair. You're kidding! So we're getting a divorce now, too. Oh, that's really terrible. I'm sorry to hear that, but how did you find out when she's been having an affair? I mean, you're in the hospital at the moment. She told me herself that she's going on a trip with another man. Can you believe that? What on earth? Who would admit it themselves? That's what I thought too. Of course, finding out about the affair itself was a shock, but to have her tell me herself? She's also going to try to take off my assets in the divorce. That aside, I definitely want to find out who this other man is. I have been pretty down since being hospitalized, but now is not the time for that. I don't really like to be like this, but the news of my anger has kind of got me fired up. Oh, sorry for making you listen to me go on about this. I haven't quite fully processed it myself. Uh, it's fine. I guess I'm also kind of lost for words. Same here. <laughs> but is it good to think about that now? I mean, how do you plan on finding out who this other guy is while you're in the hospital? Oh, I'll sort that out somehow. Somehow? Don't worry about that. I'm someone who can get things done when I put my mind to it. I've got enough savings right now to tide me over. Plus, I'll also get the compensation package from the accident. In any case, I'll end this my way. I see. But make sure to look after your health first. Don't overdo it. Thanks. I'm glad I've been lucky enough to work with someone like you. Zara! How long do you plan on ignoring me? I told you that I'll proceed with the divorce, so what's going on? Are you just going to ignore me because you're on a holiday right now? I want to talk to you about the divorce settlement and splitting assets. So make sure to reach out once you see this. To, to the lawyer, I mean. I sent you the lawyer's number earlier. You're the one who proposed a divorce, so make sure you do your part. Sorry, I can't take calls in the hospital. It'll bother everyone else. What's up? Steve, I have some bad news about your wife. What? About Zara? She passed away in an accident. Huh? What? Are you serious? What happened? I know it's hard to believe, but the police just called the office. They said that there was an accident during her trip. Come on, this isn't even funny as a joke. That's a time and a place for joking, Mark. I wish it was a joke. Apparently, she was holidaying somewhere by the sea and, while walking on some rocks or cliffs, fell into the sea. They found her things nearby. I don't believe this. I'm sorry, but that's what they said. Oh my god. I understand that you want to think it's not the truth, but it is. Uh, hold on a sec. I, I can't think straight right now. I understand. It was someone you loved, and you had your mind full of the divorce, too. It must be tough. No, that's not what I mean. I don't understand. Why would the police call the company? Normally, they would have contacted me first. Hmm, that's true. I'm not sure why that is. I didn't hear anything from her parents, either. They surely would have contacted me already. Even if I'm in the hospital, the police should always contact the family first. I really don't get it, either. Could it be that you're being tricked? What do you mean? Who did you talk to on the phone? Was it a man or a woman? Actually, I wasn't the one who spoke to them. I heard it from somebody else at the office. Wait, why were you at the office anyway? Last week was your last week, wasn't it? I just had a few last things to do to take care of there, so I just dropped by to do that. I didn't really find out the details, but the fact that your wife passed away is the truth. How can you be so sure? I mean, that's what the police said, after all. The pieces don't really fit based on what you're saying, though. I get that she fell from some rocks into the sea, but they haven't found her body, right? It doesn't seem so. And they found her belongings nearby. But would the police really declare her dead from just that? I don't really know how it works. Even if you ask me, I don't know. Oh, right. You didn't actually talk to them directly. Okay, I'll phone the office and see what happened. Um, who did you hear the news from? Uh, let's see. Who was it? 
sorry, but I was just so shocked by the news that I can't really remember who told me. That's fine, I'll just talk to the director. He'll definitely know what's going on. H hold on a second, let me take care of it. Just wait for me to get back to you. You're in the hospital after all. Leave it to me. Mark, you're lying to me, aren't you? What? Of course not. Why would I do something like that? There is nothing for me to gain by lying about this. I've worked with you for two years. I know your idiosyncrasies. Whenever you messed up on work, you would do the same thing to try and cover it up. I don't know. I don't remember. I heard it from somebody. I've heard those phrases many times from you. You always just come out with some vague excuses. Really? Do I do that? I don't remember ever having done that, though. See, there it is. Hey, Mark, could it be that you're the one who Zara's been cheating on me with? Are you kidding me? Of course not. Steve, you're not making any sense. Which one of us isn't making sense? It's going to all be sorted out by either calling the police or the office. But you didn't seem to want me to do that. Come on, Mark. If you're not the other man, why lie about this? No response? Well, I'll take that as the answer. Hey! What are you trying to do here? Why did you tell my parents that I cheated on you? Why are you getting them involved in this? I can't believe you! Oh, so you worth the life after all. Is there something with that? I mean, you went to all the trouble to lie and pretend that you died on your trip. So I really didn't think you would be the one to contact me. But then when the police really called me, I got a real shock. They only wanted you to come pick up your stuff that you had left by the sea, though. <laughs> you guys really didn't do a great job of faking your death. Shut up! Who cares about that now? It's still pretty important, I think. Did you think that wouldn't get found out immediately? I really don't know what was going on through yours and Mark's minds. You're the one at fault here. If you hadn't kept up your annoying grumbling and kept trying to make me bring you things in the hospital, I wouldn't even have said anything about the affair. Mark got angry at me for telling you, so we thought we'd try something. And that's what you came up with? <laughs> Zara, let me tell you. It's better for you to live your life without using your head too much. It doesn't work very well for you. It will just lead you to trouble if you try to use it too much. You're going to make fun of me now? Then you must be the real idiot for marrying me. Falling in love with someone when they show you just the smallest bit of kindness. I only married you because you have a good job. And I figured I'd have a relaxing time staying at home while you worked. And you didn't even realize that for over three years. That's why as soon as you told me that you might not be able to walk again after the accident, I thought about divorcing you. And here we are now. If you can't make money anymore, what use do I have for you? You're right. I really am a bad judge of character. I would never have expected that you'd be having an affair with Mark. But I'm glad that it all came to light in the end. Imagine if this happened after we'd had a kid. Then they would also be dragged into this mess. That would never have happened. Do you really think I want to have a child with someone as ugly as you? Mark is different, though. He's younger and far more handsome than you. He's definitely got promise. If I'm going to have a kid, it'll definitely be with him. I guess you really are horrible through and through. Well, I'm glad I can see that now. This will make the court case for alimony a breeze. Thanks, you two, for making things up on your own end so badly. You really helped me out. Look, about the alimony. I'll pay up, but in return, can you fix that fact that you told my parents about the affair? <laughs> Why should I do that? My parents are both really angry at me. I told them it wasn't the truth, but they won't believe me at all. They basically want to wash their hands of me and cut ties. I'm glad that your parents at least have a decent moral compass, but I'm not going to change anything that I told them. You're going to have to pay their alimony no matter what. I don't need to do you any favors to get it. Could you even keep it a secret anyway? I bet you're going to have to ask them to help you pay up anyway. Nope. I have enough money to pay on my own. There's no way you do. Why do you say that? I bet you were thinking about the money I got from insurance and compensation for the accident, right? Well, I hate to break it to you, but I gave my sister authorization and she took all the money out as my proxy. You didn't even think to check the bank accounts? 
There's no way. Yeah, there is. Go on, take a look. And I told my sister what happened. She took time off work and got over here as soon as she could. Even though it takes her three hours from where she lives. I hired a private investigator to look into you and Mark and see what's going on with the two of you. I found out that you're both living together in a really fancy apartment. I'm a bit worried about how you even plan to pay for such a place seeing as you're both unemployed. <laughs> Hold on. What do you think you're doing? A private investigator? Really? There's no way I'll be able to pay the alimony now. I'm sure Mark will help you out. If you're planning on a divorce, you should have thought about the chance of paying alimony. And to think you were going to use my money from the accident to live with him. You two really are out of your minds. Wait, then what about splitting the assets? I'm still going to get something from that. Yeah, once the divorce has been finalized, you'll get something. But that's only if you accept that you have to pay the alimony. No way. How am I supposed to live until then? Don't ask me. That's a question for Mark. Remember, he's a better man than me, right? With lots of promise for the future. So I'm sure he'll be fine. Well, Mark doesn't have that much in his savings. I'm not surprised. He did always spend his money on useless things. But that's just like you. I guess you guys are a perfect fit. Anyway, make sure you call my lawyer afterwards. They should have sent... They should have sent a bunch of paperwork to the apartment you're in now. Make sure you read them more carefully before contacting the lawyer. Wait, hold on. This is really going to cause me a lot of trouble. Look, we lived together for three years, right? Don't you have any feelings about that time? Don't be so hard on me here. You really have some guts saying something like that. I'm here in hospital with the possibility of never walking again. And you couldn't care less about me. I have no attachment and no interest in you at all. Those are your words, by the way. You feel the same, remember? Luckily, we both feel like the same way now. Steve, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. Oh, you have some nerve texting me. I'm sorry. I I've really thought over what I did. I admit that I was cheating with Zara. But can't you reduce the amount of alimony? Didn't you hear from my lawyer? He should have told you that I have no intention of doing that. He did say that. But I thought that maybe if I asked you directly, you would think about lowering it at least a little bit. I mean, I know that you're a kind person, but all of a sudden you become really cruel in this situation. Zara said you blocked her number too, so she hasn't been able to get through to you. Listen here. My cheating wife and the man she cheated on me with. I may be kind, but I'm not kind enough to show people like you any leniency here. I was nice to you as my co-worker. Now we don't have any sort of connection at all. How can you say that? And to tell my parents about this too? Oh, why did you have to go so far? My poor old dad's blood pressure has gone through the roof. He's even sicker than he was before. Does that have something to do with me? You're the one that caused this. <sighs> that may be the case, but... And anyway, there's nothing wrong with your dad. He's not sick at all. Are you really going to keep lying? What do you mean? I got a message from your dad apologizing for your actions. At that time, I really did feel bad about his health. Especially since he didn't do anything bad himself. So I asked him how he was feeling. He told me that he's as healthy as ever and hasn't had any problems recently at all. He said that. Did he? You texted me trying to apologize and say that you thought about your actions. But instead, you just come out with more and more lies. Don't you see that you just keep digging yourself a deeper hole each time you do this? In that case, I'll tell you the truth. But please, think about lowering the alimony payments. I don't see why I should do that. I can't stand Zara. Before we lived together, she was always friendly and had a smile on her face. She'd also take the trouble to do things for me too. But now she's changed entirely. She does nothing around the house, and even though she knows we have to pay a lot for the apartment, she refuses to work. And I, myself, am still in the process of looking for a job. I feel like I'm losing my mind with her. Plus, she's using up all of my savings carelessly on useless things. Yep, that sounds about right. I was just too late in realizing. You're lucky you noticed so soon. I'm not lucky at all. 
She doesn't have anywhere to go home to since her parents refuse to talk to her anymore. So I'm stuck with her. I'd like to get away from her if possible, but my dad said that if I run away now, he'll never forgive me. I see. Thanks, Mark. Honestly, I feel like I owe you some gratitude. Why do you say that? It would have been dangerous to just let a horrible woman like her free. But now that the two of you pieces of trash are together, all good people can rest a little easier. I'm sure she'll stick around for a while before she finds a new man. That's the kind of woman she is. Steve, please, I'll do anything. So, could you please just let this slide? I'll find some way to make it up to you, so please, forgive me. Okay, fine. I forgive you. Really? You will? Just kidding. There's no way I'd do that. What? Have fun living with Zara. Just make sure to keep up on your payments. <laughs> Have a good life. <coughs> After that, we finalized the divorce and reached a settlement. Zara didn't have enough money to pay for alimony, so it had to come out of what she would have received in the divorce. In the three years we were married, she didn't work or manage to save much money at all. Because of that, she ended up with barely anything at the end of the divorce proceedings. Apparently, when the two of them tried to pretend as though Zara had fallen into the sea, they did something even more stupid than lie to me. It turns out that Mark called the police pretending to be a witness himself. Giving the police false information is a crime, and he was questioned and finally fined for it. To be honest, I think of myself as being a little bit pathetic for having the wool put over my eyes by people as stupid as those two. But I'm relieved that I was somehow able to bring this mess to a close. I was discharged from the hospital, but I currently have to get around with the help of a wheelchair. My work was kind enough to find a way for me to do everything I need from home, so that has made it much easier on me. Although I was told I may never walk again, feeling has started to return to my legs bit by bit. Depending on how rehabilitation goes, but there is now a chance I'll be able to walk on my own two feet again. I was completely shocked by Zara's portrayal and the sudden divorce. But if things had remained as they were, I would have just been exploited by her for the rest of my life. If I think about it like that, I really do feel somehow grateful to Mark for taking Zara away from me. From now on, I'm going to focus on my rehabilitation and think of my health as my number one priority. And while keeping in mind my family who helped me through this tough time, as well as my company and co-workers who made it possible for me to work from home, I'm going to take back control of my life, slowly but surely. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.